The words translate into Ola ikin noke gechakus. My heart is really happy that you have come to me. Sutman klatyo, you are my reason for living. Sutman hasta klatyo means you are my reason for breathing. language just has so many different layers of, of benefit. Um, they were talking to me about what's the difference about shib between shivering and wind. They said, no, what? they had to make me think. Shivering is sukwem. You're shivering. Yeah, you're from sukwem. Pu'am is wind. Pu'am. Then I started thinking, oh, I bet you they're thinking of sukum, sukum. And that's traveling, going with the wind. Bringing the language back within our community has been a vision that has been thought of for a long time. It didn't start with us. It's been in the works for a long time. There were a lot of people that worked at that for quite a few years. Learning my language, learning Sinchoff and, and working on language revitalization in my community really has been one of my greatest gifts. It bridged a huge gap between the young people and the old people and it was really, really healing for me. Learning language is such an important thing in, in regards to learning your own identity as well. And it really also connects you to the land that you're on. Um, it really helps you kind of know who you are. So many different words in Sanchoth and you can break down and there's a story inside. So when you're learning language, uh, you're also regaining that knowledge of those old stories, but the spiritual connection to your homelands too. So our word for orca is kalthlalamachin. So if you break apart that word, kal means weak, Salt means went out into the deep parts of the ocean. Chan means it comes from the land. So why is our word for orca called Salamachin? Weak went out to the deep parts of the ocean and Chan comes from the land. You realize quickly that it comes from their creation story. Even though it, it seems like language and spirituality can be far apart, it's really not. Learning language brought me home. It just woke me up, I think. I took the language revitalization program through through UVic. I didn't ex really expect to actually make it this far, and you know, I, I come from a construction background, and um, it was actually my wife that that brought it forward. And I said, um, you know, I do want to learn language, but 
I think it comes in levels depending on how how much you want to be involved. You know, there is the diploma program through UVic, and then you can carry on to you know the bachelor's program, bachelor's of education, and you can actually become a, a teacher. And then you know there's the masters, and then you can even go for your doctorate. Uh, in language revitalization so you know there's big opportunities out there for our people and uh, depending on how involved they want to be in language and you know I felt like a big accomplishment in myself you know kind of doing my part in educating you know the greater community um, of the the real history of, of our people and the real history of Canada really because you know. it was all taken away taken away from us um, through the residential school and day school uh, experiences and trying to figure out you know how to move forward in the best way possible to educate our, our youth and educate our our communities and you know and still have our you know our teachings in place and our our ways our worldview you know because it's all based around again love honor and respect and uh not the mat is the word that always comes forward not the mat is uh, unity you know being one working together and moving forward together One of the things that we found was that the people who were involved were working triple time because they were learning their language. They were working on their language. They were learning how to revitalize a language, how to recover a language, because in some places, you know, the language was no longer being spoken. And they were learning how to teach, you know, to to work in uh, a very different structure to be able to provide language learning. Sanchathan mind frame and English mind frame, totally different. I was super culture shocked when I had to go to UVic where the understanding of who I was wasn't always there, but there were a lot of really great methodologies that I did not know about that I learned through each of the programs. In my diploma years and in the B.Ed. years, they matched us with a fluent speaker, with Hongok teachers who had been working in Indigenous language revitalization for many years, where we just felt at home. We'd go to class up the road, because that's where our language belongs. But it was a very good learning opportunity for us. In order for them to be certified as teachers, to be able to do the job of revitalizing their language, learning their language um, is it's superhuman. It's very emotional work, but we always had encouraging words for each other, how to take care of health, mental health, physical health. Our classes were always in the community, which made us more comfortable. I had babies while I was in those classes those courses and they were on my hip they were wrapped and sleeping on the table and when I had to present my my classmates were holding my babies more people were asking about how do I say it this way how do I say it that way what's the story behind this what is this place name it really is a bit shocking to say we started this 10 years ago we all got together to say hey we're gonna learn Kwakwala and we're gonna do our best to get out there and do this. And yeah, there have been so many challenges along the way, and we've lost so many of our fluent speakers in the last 10 years. And that's the scary part, just in and of itself. But the beautiful parts that have kind of blossomed out of this whole experience in the last 10 years, so many of our, our, our cohort that when we all graduated together are still teaching they're still doing the work. They're still out there and they're involved in what we're hoping ignites, I guess, the fire, the passion, the ambition that they all want to be. I had uh, a brain operation a number of years ago. I was in, I think, my second year at, at university and uh, wasn't supposed to make it through or, or live afterwards, and I was blessed that I, I'm still here. And I had to learn how to walk, and I had to learn how to read and write and use my hands and everything from the beginning. 
And I was just determined to go back to school for some reason. I think I was getting really depressed by not being, you know, moving around. And so um, while I was at UVic, it was actually the elders program at the First People's House. So May Sam and, and Skip were a big part of that and Joyce and, and Victor Underwood. And uh, they really just helped me get strength back and, and uh, they did a lot of work with me. And Timmy, my brother, was there helping with all of it. And he was seeing this, the power of prayer and the power of song that really kind of brought me back to life, really. Whoa. And every time he left, he was kind of a new person again, and he felt strong. And I can see that strength that came from, from these elders and their prayers that, that they did for him. And then I came home to New Chola territory, and I was like, I want to learn my language, because I saw that strength that it gave him. And uh, Uvic actually started teaching the language, uh, and they actually put on a, a, a several language classes in Port Alberni at North Island College. And so this was kind of a central location to all of New Chola. And so that led me into a two-year program uh, in language revitalization, which was such a wonderful thing. These elders that were previously advocating for the language became the teachers of this course. And the professors that came from UVic were more of the facilitators, and it made this kind of a natural space of learning new child's language. That's a bit harder, but I think we can do it. My brother, he's an artist, and so this connection of learning my language has helped us. And working with elders, they teach us stories of, of different dances in the past and different stories of ravens and, and sea serpents. That connection between the language and culture is something that kind of goes hand in hand. God, to think back how it all happened back then. Um, I'll have to say it was my mother. I think uh, mom was a language warrior. She kept the language alive in my home and shared it with just not her family, but the community. I was doing drug and alcohol support work here at Homolco. And at that time, that's when I realized that our language and culture is really part of the healing process. And one of my first proposals was First Voices. Um, so a lot of documenting, um, recording, editing, all that goes along. Once COVID hit, and we're trying to find things to keep busy, and we came up with the idea to get um, some simple Zoom recorders, because my mom had found out that there was some that you could just turn on and push the middle button that would record for you. So we do have a few recorders out there, but it was hard getting some things back, so it's kind of put things at a standstill. Choo! Uh, oops, we're in the car. <laughs> you probably heard me, I'm actually bouncing around my three-month-old baby. <laughs> um, she usually sits in on my calls with Nan Fidelia in the morning, so she was listening in that way. Um, and we're also finding language that I can use with her in my home. It's difficult because I have I have a pretty good ear for language, um, and so that barrier of <laughs> of being online and not being able to hear the inflections and the tonalities of language has been um, has been quite an adjustment. Taking away the in person factor, it does affect. That's part of our culture together, um, so it feels like it's really missing that in the language work. But we have adapted for sure. It, it almost feels like we've had a chance to reach out into and to actually be into more homes. It's, it sounds like a very small thing, but a very important thing where that migration of our learning is moving outside of those kind of traditional classroom settings back to where it belongs, and that's in homes and families. The most exciting part of this language program, and I didn't know this when I started, is giving back your identity. I think when people find out who they are, I think it gives them solid ground. Nobody's gonna punish you now. You can be that person you wanna be. 
and uh, you can sing the songs you want to sing and you don't have to hide anymore. Uh, I always say, whatever works it, if that's the only way we can do it, instead of being face to face, really, uh, it has to be done. I've been unable to work in my own community because I can't bring the elders in. Right now, it's more important to just grab those elders and to get as much knowledge as that we can get as possible in regards to healing and the ceremonies and the language and, and having students come up and being like, what's the Kwakula word for hope? I was listening to somebody and they said, oh, it takes about 20,000 words and phrases to save a language, you know, to make sure you've got everything. Because I remember like being younger and, and all of our fluent speakers like being together in meetings and, and them needing English translators. Like I remember that growing up, witnessing that and, and wanting that for our future for my future, you know, for my kids' future, to see that again. I would love to see that again. The people often who are working on the languages, they're usually key members of the community. They're often key members of the family the ones who are keeping the traditions alive. Our languages continue because of the work of individuals in their you know in the home communities and i see this not just in british columbia but across the country and around the world actually so there's just so much to learn and you know like and we're at the very beginning stage and i'm just so grateful to to uvic and to faculty of education and to linguistics for staying with it and for continuing the work and taking it you know to as many communities as they can This is a key set of courses because it really focuses on what people need to know to mobilize their communities. And so wherever this program has been, I know it's made a huge difference. And it just lifted, lifted the people. And, you know, and I see those young people now, they're, you know, the key uh, movers and leaders in their communities. And so, that, you know, that's what language does. <laughs>